Hello, my name is Stevie Martin with the VIA Service Building Engineering Team. This video is about the email configuration for a Web.Live OPS environment. We are taking a look at how email is set up on a Web.Live server. Some of its uses via the administration panel and some of the customization you can do in an on-premise software environment. Through the Web.Live administration panel, we use the email function in several ways. First, in creating users on the local database, we send notifications to the users via email. An account has been set up for them with the login information and password. We'll see an example of this a little later. Also, an email is sent when a user's password has been changed to notify them of the modification. In our main environment, we can set up notifications for when a user enters the environment, when they have entered the environment for the first time, or when the number of users in that environment crosses a certain threshold. This is for support. So you know who comes into the environment and when. If it's a first time user, you may well go in and introduce yourself. If it's a storefront, or some type of environment uh, involving sales or interaction with a customer. You also want to know when users reach a certain threshold. This could be for many reasons. Reaching the maximum capability of the server, or knowing when everybody's arrived for a meeting. There are various uses for this depending on your needs. Your email is set up what is in what is called the Web.Live configuration tool on the desktop. This tool can be found in the web live directory under C colon backslash program files. This is a tool that's used during initial setup to customize the environment as needed. Once you've entered the email information and you've, and you've clicked configure server, then configure subscription, the email information is bound into several areas. One of these is the web.config file for the admin panel. This is under the IIS folder in nitpub backslash www.root. In the admin panel, web.config file is a section called mail settings. And your email information is bound in here for use by the admin panel. So whenever it needs to send out an email due to some configuration change, it goes to this web.config file and it looks for the information on where to send the email. One other item of interest to note is in the same WA admin panel folder, there's a subfolder called email. In this folder are the web pages that are used to generate the email that's sent to the users. On your own premise software version of Web.Live, the administrator can come in here and customize these emails as they wish. They can add the administrator name, they can modify the company name, they can add or remove any information they want, and when the emails are sent, they will have this updated information in them. This is an example where the password is changed for a user on an OPS server. This particular one was modified to add the administrator name. The default version just has your web.alive administrator. This example of an email that was sent to a new user who was added to the web.alive server via the admin panel in the user administration tab. In this one, I made a modification to say your new web.alive account on the serviceability engineering team server. Initially, just said subject your new web.alive account. These two examples just show how you can customize the default emails that are sent to users from the on-premise software environment. If you have any additional questions about email setup on a web.live server, just contact the VIA support team. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful to you. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing a value.